Nearly two decades in the sports broadcast game and what a ride it's been. Interviews with the 42nd president, Bill Clinton, to Lakers legends Kobe Bryant and the NBA's all-time leading scorer, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, to name a few. I've been blessed to cover and tell some amazing stories, but there were so many more I didn't get to tell. Now, you also had a chance to play with Bo Jackson. Yeah. What you, like, how was it playing alongside him? You know, that was kind of like my second year of pro ball, and to see Bo Jackson coming back from that hip replacement injury and still running a 4 2 40. God, dog. <laughs> that, That's not right, man. Yeah, the dude, was, <laughs> dude came out, got a hip replacement and running a 4 2 40. Golly. So, that was. Everyone thinks that. <sighs> Prime time, maybe the best athlete of all time. Yeah. But Bo Jackson was special specimen, and the dude probably still to this day, he can hit a golf ball probably 350 yards. Wow. He can hit a baseball probably almost 400, 450, 500 feet. Yeah. And the dude probably could shoot a bow and arrow and hit like a leaf on that tree down there <laughs> from two, 300 yards out, man. So to see him, that was, that was a specimen of a, of a man yeah. that played baseball and played football. Golly. So Bo did really know everything. Oh, Bo did know. <laughs> he, know he knew. Bo was a, he was an animal. <laughs> Literally. Now, now you mentioned uh, the collision, which happened in August of 2005, one of the most violent collisions ever yeah. on a baseball field when you and Carlos Beltran both dove for a ball which resulted in a concussion, multiple fractures in your nose and cheekbone for you. How did that change you mentally and physically on the field? And how long did it take you to fully get over it and get back to the way you played the game before the collision? Uh, that was, uh, that was a, probably the biggest mental challenge I ever experienced um, as a baseball player in life uh, because um, – I, I I gave up a lot for someone else, and I felt like I almost lost all of that. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Carlos Beltran was the high dollar, you know, contract guy coming in. He was a center fielder. I was Gold Glove center fielder, and I moved for the sake of the opportunity that we may have a really good team if mm -hmm. I sacrificed myself because he didn't want to play right field. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I'm a few years older than he is or whatever. I mean, he's a great guy, everything, you know. And so we looked at it in that aspect, like this is an opportunity for us to turn around. Myself, Carlos Bell training Cliff Floyd in the outfield. And mm -hmm. that day, man, like, eh, you know, it was just scary because we both have uh, the mentality of being built. The, the DNA in your system of being a center fielder, being aggressive, aggressive, aggressive. Mm -hmm. I think if it was been a normal right fielder, it wouldn't have been came to that position. But the fact that we're both 6'2", 210 pounds, and was running full speed, uh, and we when he hit me, he knocked me into another world, basically. Mm -hmm. um, I got nine plates and screws in my face today. Uh, he broke my jaw, knocked it off hinge. I had reconstructed nose surgery. Uh, so... Everything was uh, something that uh, I I would never want to experience on anybody else, you know, want to experience. And um, that changed my life. That October, after I was in the hospital for 10 days, I was in intensive care for six, seven days. Wow. And um, to be laying up in Torrey Pines on the seven, seven tee box, <laughs> Uh, it, cause it happened in San Diego yeah. and, uh, to be, that was the only like refuge I had because to look outside and see the golf course, the only thing that gave me peace. Wow. Um, my kids were literally concerned. I, I had my mouth wired shut for two months. So I Gosh. lost, uh, probably 25 pounds. Oh, that's what a liquid diet would do yeah, for you. Exactly. Huh? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And, um, uh, it gave me an opportunity to really uh, be grounded and really humble the experience of being with my family at that particular time. Um, 
And then when I left from, you know, got out of the hospital, when I, the healing process was very long because it was my head. Right. And so, you know, just that, that experience alone, my, do- my, my sister died in October. So it just had a violent impact on me psychologically and everything else. Mm-hmm. And I, but I also got a chance to go to the place. God works in mysterious ways. The place where I got hurt at, I got traded to that place. And I got moved back to center field to chase all the fears that I had. Mm-hmm. The water was, the, the ocean was a balance for me in dealing with issues with, you know, personal, family, all that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was able to kind of like give me a, ba- a neutral balance. Uh, being on the West Coast, away from everything that I had already went through, wow. uh, gave me a chance to like really get humbled and grounded in what I was. And. Uh, it was the best experience playing in San Diego. I ended up going back there uh, with the humility and gratitude that I had and winning a, a gold glove the next year wow. right back in in San Diego. Wow. Now, um, we mentioned it earlier, having a son that's uh, on the brink of becoming a big leaguer uh, with the Detroit Tigers. Yeah. And it hasn't happened yet, but – how do you think it's going to feel when you see Cameron on the back of another major league baseball uniform and knowing that that's your name and your legacy that's going to live on another generation? Yeah, I've been asked this already, and you know, it's like, are you going to cry? I don't know how I'm going to feel, but I'm going to be, like, super, super excited for him. Uh, it's going to be bittersweet because if it happens this year, we will have to watch it on TV. And yeah. – um, you know, like I know what it, I've seen so many of the, the, the stories, you know, of just guys regular getting a chance to experience their kids right. making it their, their live out their dreams. Uh, I got a chance to see it a little bit last year with Bo Bichette and his dad Dante and a lot of other guys that, that mm. they've had a chance. Vladimir Guerrero, they've had a chance to experience right. these type of things. Uh, I wouldn't be able to be in the stands to see it like that or whatever, but yeah. it's going to be really, really special because. I understand what it takes to get there. Mm-hmm. I understand the hard work. His journey was a little different than mine. He had a fairly easier process. Um, you know, he's highly talented out of high school, first round draft pick, traded for Justin Verlander, blah, blah, blah. So mm-hmm. there's, I don't know what type of pressure that he's experienced, mm-hmm. but I do understand the pressure and what he's on the, the, the namesake you know, or the legacy of Cameron and get a chance to. To, to participate or opportunity to play in the big leagues. Is it something about the Cameron last name being involved in big trade deals? Like you said, <laughs> him and Justin, Justin Verlander, yeah. you were traded for Paul Konerko. Yeah. Konerko goes on to win a World Series for yeah. the White Sox. Yeah. Then you're traded for Ken Griffey Jr. Yeah. And I mean, like just being involved with that. I mean, did you kind of explain to him that A, being traded is a good thing because yes. people want you, and B, being able to always be affiliated and associated with those other guys that you were traded for? Uh, no doubt about it. Um, yeah. You know, I tried to explain to him that when you get traded in a situation you was in, it's an opportunity yeah. to create your own path, mm-hmm. but you'll always be tied to one of the greats. Um, my situation, I got, tra- I got traded and when arguably the best player in the game. I got traded for him and had to replace his spot. Yeah. You know, my son got traded for Justin Verlander as a prospect to go over to another yeah. team. I got traded for the guy who basically everyone looked up to that played outfield. And not only that, I have to go out to the place where he made a legacy that's, that is probably undeniably the probably the best living story that this guy at 19 years old, the kid saved Seattle baseball. Right. I got to go out and replace this guy. <laughs> no pressure, by the way. No, that's so <laughs> And to top that, I mean, that experience alone, you know, I got traded at February 10th. It's literally four days before spring training. Wow. So, but then I got, I got there that everyone was good. I just had to be able to 
understand that what I was capable of doing wasn't right. the same maybe as Ken Griffey Jr. But I can play this game though. Right. You know, so that's the reason why they brought me here. Right. And that was big in that aspect. So I continuously to try to tell my son, you still have to find out how, what type of player and how good you are yeah. to be able to compete and maintain yourself with the opportunity to play in the big leagues. Wow. Now, you mentioned before getting that honorable mention from the Hall of Fame and, yeah. and understanding that most Hall of Famers have a dominant period. Yes. But your case, in my opinion, is unique because you do hold some very distinguished records that, I mean, I'm, I'm not thinking a whole lot of other people are going to be able to do. I yeah. mean, it's pretty tough to hit four home runs in one game. Yeah. It's, it's, you have to have a long career to hit two home runs in the same game for eight 18. different teams. <laughs> yes. I mean, so when you think about yeah. all those things and, and then you kind of build your case for Cooperstown. Yeah. But if – and when I'm going to speak it to an existence, if and when it does happen, what would that mean to you to be inducted and to be immortalized in baseball's Hall of Fame? Um, I've it would be unbelievable. I don't know if they're going to bring my name back up when they do the uh, the committee stuff or whatever, you know, yeah. because I I don't think I I think I received like one vote. And I was ecstatic to receive that one vote mm. because we understand that this is the top probably zero 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 one percent of the game mm. of the 16, 17,000 people to ever play the game of baseball. You're right. Uh, yeah. That that would be just like unbelievably. I couldn't I mean, I don't know what I would feel, what sensation I would get out of that. But to just, you know, in my case, and understand the history of the game, to yeah. understand where I was in reverence at that time, you know, to be mentioned with the greats was just kind of like it's good enough for me. Well, that wouldn't be bad for a kid from LaGrange, Georgia, oh, would man, it? no doubt about it. I am in the Hall of Fame down there. <laughs> I still don't understand why I'm in the Georgia Hall of Fame yet. So I, I'm in the Hall of Fame for a, a lot of the uh, or, uh, organizations that I played for. So um, uh far as uh, the minor league stuff and everything else. So, you know, like I, I'm okay. I'm doing all right with that. Yeah, from an 18th round draft pick to a 17 year major league career to raising a son that's about to have what a lot of people project and forecast to have a long major league career as well. So Definitely. Mike Cameron might not be in the Baseball Hall of Fame right now, but you certainly have had a Hall of Fame life so far. No I doubt would about say. it. Man, I appreciate you joining Untold, Tru Untold Truths with Telly. I can get my own title out. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. But you know why I can get it out? Because I'm thinking about what I'm about to do on, to you on this golf course behind us once we finish taping. Okay, that sounds very, very, very uh, of much of a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Appreciate your time, man. Definitely, Telly. All right. That's Mike Cameron on Untold Truths with Telly.